Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swarnakar and today we are going to cover 30 questions. As you all know that we have started covering previous year papers, right? So uh, from 2023 paper booklet A, we have already covered 30 questions. Now we are going to cover 30 more questions on this series, okay? You can get my lectures at 9 p.m. on a daily basis but before diving into the video, let me share that there is a great opportunity to prepare smartly for the April 2, 2024 Maharashtra set. Global Online is offering a comprehensive English literature course. You'll have access to video lectures that explain concepts using short and effective methods. The course also provides downloadable PDF notes for your convenience. Additionally, uh, you'll get mock tests that simulate real exam conditions, boosting your final preparation to learn more reach out to the provided contact number. Now, if you want to watch free videos, first download the Global Online app. Once you are in, head to the store section. There you'll find details of all the courses, right? Now use the search bar to directly type in the course name and you'll see an overview along with fees for the duration. Click on the content section that is here, okay? And you will uh, find unit wise folders in each unit you'll get theory lectures evaluation notes mock tests and uh, mcqs no need for extra reading okay now if you decide to join the paid course you will also be added to a whatsapp group in that group you'll receive pdfs uh, for each session along with the videos link it's a great way to stay connected and get additional resources and uh, so happy learning now let's start so now let's start with the first question as we have already covered 30 questions on this uh, paper. Okay, so we are going to start with 31st question number 31. Okay, curries and other India Indian dishes that is basically is a work of curries and other Indian dishes is a work of the options are R.K. Narayan, Mulk Raj Anand, Rudyard Kipling and Vikram Seth. So with this type of question you need to understand that there will be works of a particular writer and they'll ask you to answer it. Okay, they'll ask you question on the works and they'll ask you to write it or select the correct options. The writers basically. Okay, so you need to understand that. Now the correct answer is Mulk Raj Anand. So let's cover some other works of Mulk Raj Anand as he wrote Untouchable then Kuli, he also wrote Two Leaves and a Bud, The Village. So you need to cover all of that, okay, across the black water. These are the works and including that, you need to cover this writer's works as well. R.K. Narayan's work, Rudyard Kipling's work, Vikram Seth's work, okay. Moving on to question number 32. All About H. Hatter is written by, All About H. Hatter is written by, something extra I need to tell you here H Hatter basically H stands for Hindustan Wala okay for what for Hindustan Wala okay it was published in 1948 1948 the options are Bhavani Bhattacharya Anita Desai GV Desai basically this is not Desai this is Desani Desani Manju Kaur Okay, so the correct answer is G.V. Deshani, but let me tell you some other works by G.V. Deshani. Hali, Colin, a play, which was published in 1952. 52. Hali and Collected Stories, they actually collected it and published altogether. So it was in 1991. He published it, okay? So the correct answer is C. Moving on to third question. Question number 33. Which of the following texts can be classified as belonging to the Middle English literature? So you need to tell us or uh, to the examiner that which are the works that belongs to Middle English period, okay? So here the options are Cademan's, Heem and Beowulf. Beowulf and Cademan hymns of course belongs to Anglo-Saxon period, also, of course, right? Because when we were doing or covering Anglo-Saxon literature, I already talked about it. Next option, the Fairy Queen 
Aristotle and Stella and the Spanish tragedy. These are works from Elizabeth age, Elizabethan age. Third one, Walpone, the white devil, the changeling. Uh, it is, I think, Jacobin period, of course, Ben Johnson. Then the fourth one, Pierce Plowman, Sir Gowan and the Green Knight and the Canterbury Tales. This is actually belongs to Middle English literature. Okay, so the correct answer is D. Pierce Plowman, Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, the Canterbury Tales, right? Moving on to question number 34. Shelley, that means P.B. Shelley. Defends poetry against the attack of. Like he defended poetry against, uh, against the attack of whom? Options are Robert Southey, Walter Scott, Thomas Love Peacock and Samuel T. Basically Taylor Collieries. So, C. A defense of the basically the title uh, of the essay is defense of poetry. And that was written in um, 1821. But after his death, after the death of the author, it was published in 1840. Basically, in this particular essay, he argued or talked about the importance and value of poetry as a force for social and moral good. Okay, so against whom he wrote it? Thomas Love Peacock. The third one is the correct answer. Okay, so do remember this. Moving on to question number 30. Okay, I, I think I just missed 35. Okay, let's cover 36. Which among the following poets has written the lines? Bliss was it. That dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. Bliss was it that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. If you are young, please be happy about it, okay? Don't panic and don't stress out. So the options are, basically I tell you that these are the lines from the prelude. And if you know who wrote prelude, you can answer this question. Prelude. The options are William Wordsworth, Robert Southey, Lord Byron and D. Thomas D. Quincy. So, of course, the prelude has been written by William Wordsworth. And do read and do find out the publishing year of the prelude and other works of William Wordsworth. And if somebody uh, cannot understand the language or the way I am speaking, please uh, try to understand because you are supposed to read in English. If you are an English literature student, if you are supposed to read in English, you can, uh, you have to speak in English, you have to understand English language, right? So you need to, and I am speaking in a very simple way, so you will get it. Question number 37. Let me not to the marriage of true minds. Admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration fans. It basically, love is not love if it changes. Because even after fights and even uh, somebody tries to um, do some hodgepodge in your relationship, that will never going to work out. Because if you love somebody, you will trust that person. So that is actually the lines are saying, love is not love which alters when it alteration fans. So you need to find out the above lines are from a sonnet by whom. Okay. So... Whether it's William Shakespeare, Sir Thomas Wyatt, Edmund Spencer or Sir Philip Sidney. Okay, so these are the lines from sonnet, sonnet 116 and written by William Shakespeare. So the first one is the correct answer. Moving on to question number 38. Who among the architect and stage designer who had provided the sets for Ben Johnson's mask? This is masks. Masks. Okay. Now you need to tell us that. Whether it's John Webster, Inigo Jones, John Ford or George Chapman. Okay. So basically Inigo Jones was the one and uh, he actually collaborated with a playwright. Uh, of course the Ben Johnson and uh, uh, he helped him to produce uh, a series of masks. Okay. For both, for both whom? For James the first and also for Charles the first. Do remember this detail. So the B will be our correct option. Moving on to question number 39. 
who calls his novels comic epic poem in prose comic epic poem in prose now just imagine comic is here epic is there poem is there prose is there contradictory contradictory basically so you need to answer that okay so the options are daniel defoe henry fielding lawrence tan and samuel richardson basically for a particular work this phrase has been used by whom i'll tell you but the first thing i need to tell you here is abraham adams there's a work abraham adams okay abraham adams and that was written by henry fielding so the correct answer would be henry fielding okay moving on to question number 40 touchstone is a famous character in william shakespeare so touchstone is a very famous character and he's a basically very clever and witty fool okay the character of a fool he uh, was with rosalind and celia and uh, think about the character and you can find out if you have read william shakespeare's work the options are all swell that ends well b a midsummer's night's dream c as you like it and twelfth night the correct option is as you like it the third one okay moving on to question number 41 on the knocking at the gate in macbeth is written by don't get confused macbeth is here so william shakespeare will be the answer uh, in options also you are not going to have that option okay so on the knocking at the gate in macbeth is written by the options are walter scott lord byron thomas de quincey and william blake it was basically published in 1823 in london magazine and the writer is thomas de quincey so the third one is the correct answer okay moving on to question number 42 among the four statements given below only one statement is correct identify the correct one so it is all about new criticism so let me tell you something about new criticism here that new criticism actually emphasize the close reading when you only focus on what on the text not on the writer not on the writer's life or something else outside the book you are not going to focus on that so the options here new criticism considers text as a cultural construct this is going to happen in culture studies new criticism considers text as a product of history no new criticism consider text as a repository of authorial intentions no of course there is no authorial intentions included the fourth one new criticism consider text as an autonomous ontological and organic whole of course it consider uh, text in that way in this type of uh, basically autonomous and ontological and organic whole are the very perfect words that can be used in new criticism with basically so the fourth one is the correct option okay moving on to question number 43 okay let me tell you something more about this some of the uh, critics or you can say the theorist included ellen tate uh, robert pen warren john crow ranson cleanet brook okay so i have already discussed this uh, them basically yeah okay question number 43 the exemplar and mentor of liberal humanism in england was the exemplar and mentor of liberal humanism in england was basically in england the question is asking see here the options samuel johnson john dryden alexander pope and matthew arnold so the options the correct option is Matthew Arnold students okay moving on to question number 44 i missed the sign of question here now the sign basically q initial i have known her from an ample nation choose one then close the values of her attention like stone okay this a the specific line is there and you need to find out that uh, from where it has been taken okay so of course the question is itself telling you that it is from emily dickinson's poem 
and here you, you have these options i am nobody who are you okay this is so uh, inspiring i am nobody the person is thinking that i am no one who are you second i felt a funnel in my brain c the soul selects her own society d the day came slow till 5 o'clock the day came slow till 5 o'clock so the correct option is the soul selects her own society okay so it is basically uh, published in 1890 and posthumously it was published okay and uh, basically speaker celebrates the virtues of an independent and mostly solitary life like the person who loves solitude and uh, the writer is trying to portray that to tell you and to celebrate that okay so if you read it you'll get to know that you need to enjoy your solitude okay so the correct answer is c moving on to question number 45 a foot in which a stressed syllable is followed by an unstressed syllable is called so focus on the question basically that is how you are going to answer the question okay okay so a foot in which a stressed syllable is followed by an unstressed syllable is called okay so focus on the question as i told you a foot okay a foot includes one stressed syllable or unstressed syllable i'm not talking about the arrangement here okay okay so here anapestic anapestic stands for what anapestic follows an unstressed syllable followed with a stressed syllable okay okay so unstressed syllable followed with stressed syllable okay so here you can see that 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 what here the question is asking a stressed syllable is followed by an unstressed syllable so we are not going to consider this option the second one basically is trophy that is also known as trophy that is followed with stressed syllable with unstressed syllable okay then the fourth fifth uh, sorry third one i am this I am this basically. It is not a foot. It uh, is considered five foot into a feet. So it is feet. Okay. I am this of course follows the same as an apostrophe, but here is not a foot. A foot is not here. So we will not consider this option as well. Then the fourth one is dactyle, and that actually follows two unstressed syllables. There is no stressed syllable here. Two unstressed syllables will be there. So of course you can find out the option. The correct option is the B. Trochaic. Okay. Trochaic will be our correct option. Moving on to question number forty-six. A phonetic and epigram are the distinguishing features of the prose style of a phonetic. An epigram are the distinguishing features of the prose style of. So basically, with whom it is related. So the options are Francis Bacon. Joseph Edison and the th third one is Richard Steele and the fourth one is Charles Lamb. Okay, I'm really sorry for the mic because it dropped out. I didn't realize that. Now, so the correct option is Francis Bacon. Okay, we'll consider Francis Bacon when it comes to this question. Moving on to question number forty-seven. Who among the following can be said to be the dramatist of the Victorian age? Dramatist, basically, It is not talking about the writer or author. Okay, so you need to be particular with this question. So here are the options: George Bernard Shaw, that is G. B. Shaw, Oscar Wilde, Thomas Malory, and Charles Dickens. George Bernard Shaw does not belong to Victorian age. Of course, we'll not consider that. We'll exclude him. Oscar Wilde uh, was a Victorian. Uh, Dramatis because he wrote the importance of being earnest and the picture in of a Dorian Gray. Of course, that is a very famous work. Okay, so we'll consider this one. Thomas Malory and Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens was, uh, of course, a novelist, and Thomas Malory, of course, will con not consider him basically the writer. So the correct answer will be Oscar Wilde. Okay, moving on to question number forty-eight. Who said it is healthier to read tidbits? Then Tennyson's Idylls of the King. Basically, tidbit stands for easy kind of reading, a magazine, the funny kind of magazine. Okay, so here you need to tell or answer who said it is healthier to read tidbits than Tennyson's Idylls of the Kings. So the options are George Orwell, Samuel Beckett, Kingsley Amis, and James Sinch. Basically, uh, this line. 
was actually uh, the writer wrote in an essay books versus cigarettes how many of you do that cigarettes okay never mind okay so the writer of this particular work is george orwell and that was published in 1946 so the correct option will be george orwell moving on to question number 49 we are going close to the end which one of the following novels is a part of lauren dallas evignan quintet so let me tell you there is a five series of novel okay five majestic novels and you need to know the uh, names of it monsieur and you can also search it out if you will get confused livia constance and the one is sebastian and the other one is quinx okay so you need to remember this so that you can answer the questions so the correct option is sebastian the question number 49th answer is sebastian the b option b moving on to question number 50 the realization of a morpheme in terms of a phoneme is called the realization of morpheme in terms of a morpheme is called sometimes you'll get confused okay that would be morphonemics because somewhere it is related morpheme and phoneme phoneme and we can add it together mix it together and you can get a word morphonemics so that is very stupid of you if you'll take that okay the other options is phonetics third semantics the fourth one is pragmatics pragmatics uh pragmatics hai that is pragmatics okay so the correct answer is phonetics do remember this and if you don't know this words definition read it out moving on to question number 51 this is very very basic i will not explain which is not a work of franz kafka the first option is metamorphosis caucasian chalk circle the caucasian chalk circle was written by bottle bridge of course this is a work uh, of bottle bridge okay so of course this will be this can be an answer the third one is the trial or the fourth one the judgment of course metamorphosis has been written by franz kafka the trial was also one of work of franz kafka and the judgment is not an exception here so and other works like a hunger artist wait a minute a hunger artist okay then the castle these are the other works of franz kafka you can consider them okay so the correct answer is caucasian chalk circle moving on to question number 52 the scene wherein the narrator is transported to his childhood while he tastes a madeleine dipped in tea appears in there is a scene in a particular work okay where uh, his mother um gave him uh, of course uh, a cup of a tea and he actually went back to his past and thinking about uh, the childhood okay childhood memory so basically there is a scene in which particular work you need to tell us okay so the option a options are war and peace second remembrance of things past third alice in wonderland and sons and lovers sons and lovers was uh, written by dh lawrence alice in wonderland it was of course written by lewis carroll right war and peace was written by leo tolstoy leo tolstoy and remembrance of things uh past was written by frost okay so you can see the uh, title of this particular work you can get that this is our correct answer okay moving on to question number 53 which poet said that he created poetry which attend the end of blood imagination intellect and running together which poet said that he created poetry which actually attend the end of blood imagination intellect running together okay so who is the writer whether it's uh, w b h or coventry petmo or c d lewis or george parker so the correct answer here is w b h william butler yeats okay moving on to question number 54 who wrote daniel deronda who wrote daniel deronda okay so 
I have already told you that you need to consider or remember the writer's work. Okay. If you are going to get this kind of questions, no. So, you need to remember the writer's work in detail. At least if you are uh, able to remember the title, that is also more than enough. But still, if you can read, you can read it out. Now, the options are George Eliot, B, Jane Austen, C, Emily Bront, or the fourth one is Charlotte Bront. Okay, so the correct answer is George Eliot. Moving on to question number 55. Cyril Debbie Dean is a an or slash n basically whether uh, mm, whether it's a australian playwright or canadian poet or african novelist or american dramatist of course it belongs to canadian poet okay the correct answer will be canadian poet moving on to question number 56 the term diaspora comes from the term diaspora comes from whether it's from Latin, French, Greek, Scandinavian. Okay. Okay. So, the term diaspora comes from, from Greek. Okay. From Greek it came. And there is a word diaspero. Okay. And that actually means to show over. Okay. So, the correct answer is Greek. Moving on to question number 57. Which of this is not a translation of the Bible into English? So, it seems every uh, Bible is a translation of a Bible. So, you are going to get the answer straight here. So, the options are Caxton's Bible, Tyndale's Bible, King James Bi Version or Wycliffe's Bible. So, with only one Bible, you can get the answer from. Okay. So, Tyndall's Bible is basically directed, uh, uh, directly translated from Hebrew and Greek text. Okay, so this is not something related to the Bible. So of course, Hebrew and Greek text directly translated from text, not title. So the correct answer is Tyndall's Bible. Okay, moving on to question number fifty-eight. A deep thong is a deep thong is what? A deep thong is a sound. Sound C, the option number B. A sound formed by the combination of two vowels. Two vowels in a single syllable. There will be no other syllable, more than one. There will be only single syllable. And a sound basically formed by the combination of what? Combination of two vowels in a single syllable. That is deep thong. Okay? So don't forget that. Do remember it because. There is no other options you can do or you can answer such questions in the exam hall. So, B is the correct answer. Moving on to question number 59. Who amongst the following is not a primary practitioner of deconstruction? So, basically, when it comes to deconstruction, Jack Terry is the, is the prominent figure here, okay? But other than that, other theories were also there. But the options are Paul D. Mann. Barbara Johnson, George Lukacs or J. H. Miller. So, the only option we can consider here is George Lukacs because George Lukacs was um, giving theories on some other theories, okay. He was not very much related to deconstruction. Moving on to question number 60 and the last question we are going to have in this particular lecture. Who in? An essay of dramatic poesy by Dryden represents the ancients. Who in an essay of dramatic poesy by Dryden represents the ancients. So, when you read an essay of dramatic poesy, you are going to have some characters uh, favoring ancients, some character, basically one character is favoring the modern, some are favoring restoration, some are favoring modern. Okay, so you are going to get it but you need to remember all of that so the first option is Lysidius, b Kreitz, c eugenius or that is john dryden of course john dryden was also there he was also uh, favoring something but the correct answer is favoring the ancients or representing the ancients that is Kreitz. okay the correct answer is b 
Now we have completed this lecture. We are going to cover other questions on our upcoming lectures. And thank you so much. And if you have any suggestion, you can comment down below. Okay, thank you.